Just fucking do it. Subscribe now. So, um, and it's 15%. Now, when I did it, I didn't do the set aside. I didn't do the set aside. I, because I don't do a lot of homework on anything, as you probably already figured out. I'm a macro guy. All I knew is I could, I could convince Marion Refinery. It was one uh, run by a general officer who happened to go through OCS, same place I did, that I would supply him with all the jet fuel that his refinery could uh, produce. Uh, and so, but now there's like a set aside, which is even easier. 15%. Now, counties, provinces, states, all local municipalities have the same kind of mandate. Los Angeles County, uh, Mesa, Mesa, Arizona, all have mandates that 15% of their shit's got to come from a set-aside business. So if you're a Vietnamese a woman with one tit fought, uh, in the Americans against, the, you know, not for Vietnam, I mean, you're a shoe in And the big companies have to check boxes. The more boxes they check, the higher the probability that uh, you, you can get in and get accepted the first time around. First time around. This is something that if you try the first time, you don't stop just because you don't get it. You just keep re-entering, hit the send button. I know that's a lot of work for you people, hitting the same motherfucking send button over and over again. But within the first five or six times, you're going to get a contract. Yes, sir. Understanding is that something close to 80% of those are not filled or never filled. 80% is what? Of those contracts are never filled. Yeah, thank you. I haven't got to that part yet because not enough people bid on them. So they're just like you. You're not going to do it. Nobody does it. You understand what I'm saying, Doc? Nobody. Last year, no, this is wrong. 2000, uh, pre-corona, three and a half billion dollars, more or less, let's call it four billion, of government money wasn't spent on these kind of contracts. Because they're all pendels. Why? I've been saying this for 29 years, and I got this many people. Because you don't really deserve in your mind that you should get rich. I know you don't believe me. Some of you are starting to believe me. Because I'm going to show you example after example after example. There's gold on the streets. Bird nests on the ground that you don't pick up. So you register. And there's a bunch of paperwork. Not that much, but it's all electronic. I mean, it's not the real paperwork like I had to fill out. Uh, and there's, a, there's lists of the uh, people that have already been approved. In other words, your joint venture partner. Uh, Tesla, American Motors, or excuse me, uh, American Airlines, British Petroleum, Cardinal Health, NHS. NHS doesn't even bid on their own shit. That's a National Health Service here. And some of you, it doesn't matter. I, I would bid on anything. But you'll want to know about the industry because you're stupid. Even though I tell you, you shouldn't know anything. But you won't do that. What's the website for the UK? It's called uk.gov. I mean... For the... Uh, what on? Government, I mean, it's uk.gov. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it is, and there's only two million contracts daily. Only two million. No, not enough. Yeah, so yeah, I know why he won't do it now. Not enough. Um, uh, two hardcore seminars ago, we bid in one government contract in a hardcore seminar. And, but the, the question is, then what? They never followed up. They never got a second contract. They never did it again. Why? I know why. Because you're worthless pieces of shit that you shouldn't have. I mean, why else wouldn't you? Because you don't think you deserve it. I've trained a lot of people in 30 years. That many. Now, let's get back to it. Okay. 
Now, so uh, let's say you, uh, I, I, uh, during the hardcore seminar, I wanted to bid, bid on condoms and tampons. That's what I wanted to bid on. And, uh, the, um, and we did. We didn't get the contracts, though. Because I, I, I would have taken a full-page ad out in the Financial Times if we had gotten a condom, condom fucking contract or, a, or both, a condom and a tampon contract. I would have been jumping. I mean, I would have skydived into the fucking uh, United Nations building. But we didn't. So, But we did get a contract for painting lines on the M26 down south in England. And the guy that got the contract, the U, instead of doing it right, it was a contract for about 350,000 pounds. Instead of doing it right, he went and hired college students. They went down there. They're all uh, juiced up on drugs. And the lines looked like this. And so he had to redo it. He actually lost money on the motherfucker because he had to go find a proper uh, contractor and a line person, whatever they do. And so he made like on a three or four hundred thousand, he made like twenty grand or something instead of making like the three hundred he should have. Because if left to your own devices, nine times out of ten you'll deviate or meander to self-sabotaging activities. And your two answers when when I confront you with it. I did the best I knew how, which obviously isn't a good answer, or you don't know what you don't know. That's a better answer, but still not a good answer. And you bet on the contracts until you get one. And the margins uh, in cer certain of the contracts uh, are bigger margins than others. And they follow, roughly speaking, the margins of general industry. The retail contracts are low margin, and the uh, healthcare. Contracts are a big margin. The, the system went crazy when Corona came around and they, were, uh, they needed masks. And they needed all the gear that you get dressed up on. I know two people that got to be billionaires. Billion with a B. The UK government's trying to get uh, a mask from Turkey. And, they, and in fact, the movie that's uh, this, uh, England, there's a movie about Boris the Baboon that's out on Sky TV right now. It's a six-part and they even talk about this turkey thing where they got it all fucked up. And they, where my kids got the contracts. They bought them for 14 cents and they sold them to the government for four pounds. Trillions of them. Did you make any money on the uh, mass stock? I made some money on uh, some medical equipment, but. Peanuts. I do have a question, though. Sure. Say there's a contract on the government website for the NHS for something like radiology. They just don't have the capacity on the NHS to do it. So us, we're the, we're the subcontractor. We go to, like, for example, like a private provider, and we just set it up so that the overflow from the NHS comes in. We get paid. We pay the, our, part, our, our joint venture partner, and that's, that's how we do it, yeah? Simplistically, yes. But... You may have, in your contract with an NHS, you may have a conflict clause. You got to check that. I don't want you to go to jail on me now. So, I mean, there may be a conflict. Right. Now, not everybody that works for the NHS is in a conflict situation. But because you don't want to get rich anyway, all the lazy cunts didn't do anything. So, but you could be in, in a conflict. But just check. Does your, what? Would, I, would I run it through, through my, my legal... Well, no, so well, well, due diligence. do you have a legal staff now? What do you mean you're legal? So how, how am I going to find if I'm conflicted or not? Oh, well, I mean, first of all, uh, uh, the, you're, you're more articulate. You speak the king's English uh, better than most people in this room. I would read your con You have a contract with NHS, don't you? No. no. Well, then you, you can't have a... Well, I, I, I don't want to say you can't have a conflict, but if nothing contractually sounds like nothing contractually binds you or precludes you from doing this. But check. Check. Now we're going to see him. NHS scam! Doc, Doc, uh, does 11 to 26 years. <laughs> now see, I, if he went to jail, I'd laugh. I wouldn't send him flowers. Or, you know, just, you know, uh, easy come, easy go. You know, little, you know, I'm going to call him Chinese, even though he's not. Little fucking Chinaman, I don't give a fuck about him. You know? Okay, so now, and some of the guys, 
the smarter guys. When there's a war, they need ammunition, guns, all kinds of shit I know right now. I know some of my kids are helping fund or get, get equipment to Ukraine through bidding. And it's e easy peasy. There's some restrictions. Like, I don't think that you can take ammunition like my stupid kids during the Gulf War took from ch uh, China. And the ammunition was from World War II, as I recall. So even though very seldom does a bullet go dead, but the, this ammunition was from World War II in the Korean War, so it was over 40 years old or 30 years old when they, when they sold it to the government, the U.S. government. And, um, and that's a federal offense. Because some of the bullets didn't work. I mean, I, I've, I've never seen gunpowder go stale, but I guess it can go stale. Normally, they used to say the Chinese uh, ammunition and Korean ammunition, the only reason it went stale is because it wasn't 100% gunpowder. They salted it down like narcotics. They put talcum fucking powder in the bullets. And eventually, the talcum powder ate the fucking uh, gunpowder. Okay. Government contracts. You can bid every day of your life. Send, send. That's too much work for you. I understand that. Send, send, send. Send, send, send. But you won't do it. And we've got a guy that did one. Sounds like he did it kind of half-assed, but he did one. Send, send, send. The state of Texas, Houston, Texas, Arlington, Texas, Omaha, Nebraska, all have government contracts. And they're all, not all outrageously overpriced, but almost all are outrageously overpriced, yeah. So what's the deal? Uh, does it mean uh, we bet um, on the contract, and if we win, then we um, look where we got the ammunition? No, you know, you already have the suppliers set up. You don't bid. Now, some people, a good point. Some people bid on the contract with no supplier. Then you got to scr scramble around and try to get a supplier, and um, the. Um, but normally you can get a supplier. I'm not suggesting you bid on the contract with no supplier. I'm not telling you to do that, but people do do it. People do do it. Now, when I bid for my contract in 1982, today, or no, I don't know, six months ago when Sally and I were in Washington to go to the Pentagon, four of the six people that I bid against, that I won, are still in Washington bidding on these contracts. This is supposed to be a short-term solution to a short-term problem. This is not supposed to be a long-term solution to a short-term problem. So there are companies there that now have built up huge infrastructures. They've got generals on the board, retired senators, blah, 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 blah. And, it's a, and now the, the bidding process, in addition to the computer, there's a room about this big that's got about 50 or 60 people behind computers. 1562 wins the contract. And they're sitting there with my lobbyist sitting next to them, making sure, and they, they don't have to pick in the top, all you have to do is pick one out of the top 10. It used to be you had to pick it in the top three, but now it's the top ten. So you pick number eight, which is your brother-in-law. And it's the same in Germany. It's the same in the Netherlands. It's the same in Canada. The most sophisticated robbing systems in the America. And that's why the governments are almost always over budget. And right now, cybersecurity and artificial intelligence, I mean, those contracts are sizzling hot. Sizzling. And that's how I got started. And a few of the other guys got started. We had a kid here in the 90s who graduated from Oxford. He came to the seminar, and I said, if I were you, and he had a uh, degree in computer science, I would go to Silicon Valley, and uh, I would fuck them where they breathe. And I would change my name. He got a, a ticket from London Heathrow to San Francisco. And he allegedly, I don't know, if, took contracts 
ordeals that had failed in the Oxford labs, failed. They had already written off, took them to Silicon Valley, and started three startups and sold out. It's rare when an inventor comes and sells out at the beginning, right? Well, he sold out, allegedly, at the beginning, made 350, 750, and 850 million dollars. He took that money, ran like a thief in the night, and the Gulf War contract came up for the security section. It's called the Green Zone. The Green Zone. He bid on the contract and won it. He bid, he'd do all the security for the Green Zone for eight or nine hundred million. Just what? What? Well, he, his subcontracting partner was G4. The largest security firm has now been gobbled up in something else, but it was called G4 then. Uh, he won the contract. He then hired G4, the largest security firm in the world, paid them 150 or 200 million to do the contract, and he pocketed 500 million. There was an, uh, a, a government investigation, congressional investigation over it. Congress was so embarrassed, he bid on the second contract four years later and won it again. He won it again. He went back to G4, as legend has it, and G4 told him this time, fuck off, and gave him 50 million, get the fuck out, and they took the contract over. One of my boys. Then he got a G2, and he's doing, uh, 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 you know, the old videos, you know, that used to be like this, what do you call them? Um, when you put the video, uh, yeah, you know what I'm talking about, okay. Uh, with four or five hookers. And the castle man was right, sperm floats at 65,000 feet. And then when he was interviewed, the castle man taught me, the castle man. See, that's the only time you bring my name up when you get in trouble. And he now is with a different name, lives in Boston. He's a very prestigious guy. You'd probably know his new name if I told you, which I'm not. Uh, and he, he has about four or five billion under management. He's not the best one I ever had, but he actually did what I told him. I didn't know that he was going to sell Silicon Valley uh, a load of shit that didn't work. I did tell him, take the money and run like a thief in the night. This, you, you, I'm not expect, I, I don't want you to do that. I'm just telling you, contracts. He now has a place in Nantucket. You would know the name of the estate if I mentioned it. And he's there with uh, Obama and uh, everybody just smoking dope and having a great time. And it's all not in this room. It all started there, in that room over there, the old seminar room. No. It was immoral, the fact that he took something he knew didn't work. Now, he would contend that I didn't know it didn't work. I thought that if we twisted it a little more, the Silicon boys were smarter than us Oxford boys. That's his story. I don't buy that, though. He had three deals. When I tell you the government contracts work, his parents still hate me. His dad's a very prominent solicitor in London, and his mother is a very high-profile aerospace engineer. They have uh, dolls with pins that they do every night on me. Okay, YouTube.